Okay, so I want to do a little bit of a fireside chat here. Here, here, let's, 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 let's fireplace. So I want to talk about the impact of AI on search. So obviously this week was very heavily dominated by Bing and Google talking about how they're going to incorporate AI power results, results in the search. And we have some videos about that. But what does this actually mean for search? What does it mean for users? What does it mean for search engines? And maybe most importantly, what does it mean for publishers and the people who create content that they want to rank in the search results? There is a huge swath of the internet that creates content that is shopping-based buying guides. And if you are one of these SEOs, one of these creators, you better pay attention to this. So. One of the examples that Microsoft used was, you know, how do you sort of shop for a television? And they will crawl through these results from excellent sites that put in time and research and money to review expensive television sets, like the New York Times' Wirecutter, uh, R-T-I-N-G-S, or like rating, that's sound like ratings. They do an excellent job reviewing TVs, Tom's Guide. There's a few others that really invest time to give you the answer you're looking for. And they test these things and they spend hours and hours buying and trying and writing and they're really thoughtful and they update these reviews. Well, if the search engines now crawl those reviews, take, distill the results and give you sort of an aggregate answer, push it atop the result, your incentive to click any individual result just went way down. And what does that mean for the people creating content? Well, that means less people are clicking on the links within that content to go buy that television. And that's how a lot of publishers get paid. That's a big part of internet marketing. It's called affiliate marketing. It means if you go to a website, they say, hey, this is a good TV, or here's a link to go buy a TV, and you click it, and you go to Amazon or Best Buy and you buy it, they'll get five to 10% of that purchase, right? That is a big part of the way the modern monetization of the internet works. But if the search results put that above, you know, the opportunity to collect those dollars dwindles and dwindles. But if the AI powered search results are built atop the people putting in the hard work and the companies putting in the hard work and they no longer have the incentive and the return to put in that hard work, then what powers the actual AI results? Those results are there right now because you have sites like the wire cutter, ratings, Tom's guide, and all those who do the work, AI crawls it, puts it up there. So everyone's happy now. Hey, you cut out a step in my journey. Cool. But the New York Times, the wire cutter, um, New York Times is wire cutter, ratings, Tom's guide, all these other sites in every vertical. This is for car products. This is for cars, uh, shampoo, you name it. There are sites that create content and operate on affiliate links because they need traffic. They need ad dollars. They need people to click their links and go buy products. But some of the content's really good. If AI crawls it and puts it towards the top, people don't click it. And so then what happens? What does the AI have to crawl if by its very existence, it begins to put out a business or water down the content that is created by these sites because they can't make as much money doing it. Well, then you have people who are manipulating the AI. And what is to stop a company like Samsung right now, today, from the newest black hat AI strategy out there to, and I don't know if this exists yet, but I guarantee you it will, to hire an agency to create 400 dummy websites that make it look like they have impartial television reviews that the AI then crawls and all those reviews recommend a certain Samsung television. So then when you search for best television, at the top it says, well, you know, this Samsung television appears to be the best reviewed. Well, it appears to be the best reviewed because all the, the AI has been manipulated by the sheer volume of sites all recommending this TV. Now certainly, certainly Google and Microsoft are smart enough to try to separate quality content like that put out by the New York Times I don't mean to keep citing the New York Times. The Wirecutter is an excellent tech site. So put out by the Wirecutter and some of these other sites that really do the work and some of the BS sites. And there's a lot of BS sites out there that just link to a bunch of TVs that look good and they get affiliate links, but they didn't put in the work. They didn't review the television. They didn't set it up in a bright room. They didn't set it up in a dark room. They didn't test the sound, right? So search is pretty good at determining which results are best and putting those towards the top. Okay, fine. So maybe they can train the AI to not look at the crap, so to speak. But again, if you are coming at the very existence of these quality sites by digging through them to generate your AI content, and over time those sites become less quality because they don't have the incentive to put as much time and effort into it, then those crap results are going to start feeding the AI. And you got this weird circular problem of 
people trying to manipulate, instead of the search results, the AI that sits atop the search results. And maybe the person trying to manipulate it isn't someone trying to get a click or someone trying to make an affiliate sale, but it's the actual companies behind these product recommendations through third-party agencies. Like, I know we're kind of going down the rabbit hole here, but there's a weird set of incentives that have now been set up by these AI-generated search results. When search engines no longer have the primary objective of helping you search and directing you to places on the internet, but they take the information from those places and show it to you before you can ever get there, it creates a lot of weird dollar and cents incentives, not only for the search engines, not only for publishers, but for the companies whose products might be featured. And in a way, it's really concerning that some of the main use cases that Bing in particular talked about was on helping you make these complex buying decisions that were, would require you to read a bunch of these websites. That seems to be the thing today, at least in terms of search, and I believe search is only a very small part of AI, but that seems to be the thing today that search-based AI is really good at, and it's gonna really make things weird because if I'm the wire cutter now, I don't want that company crawling my content to show a result above it and someone never clicks on it because if that happens, I'm not gonna pay the... Re five reporters to review these things, not gonna invest $100,000 to buy all these TVs and try them out, not gonna spend hours and hours updating and checking for the best price and all this. Really weird stuff coming. So I don't think this is the end of SEO by any stretch, but I think we are now entering the era where publishers and companies try and find ways to manipulate AI or get those potentially all important AI citations at the bottom of these results. It's not as good as the regular search result, but it might be the last thing publishers have left in certain areas. Anyway, this has been my fireside chat as someone who knows SEO really well. And to give you an example of a little bit of my street cred here, every time Google releases a new product, um, there's a way for SEOs, I don't say to manipulate it, but to use it to their advantage, right? So Google News is kind of a free ticket to the top of the search results. But Google News only appears when there's enough search volume on a term that Google thinks it's newsworthy. So for instance, if you just typed plastic water bottles, unless there is some crazy water bottle shortage right now, you're probably not going to get a Google News result. But if you were to search State of the Union, which just happened this week in the United States, then there's going to be a whole bunch of news stories because Google can see, oh my God, a whole bunch of articles just got written about us. People are searching for it. It must be timely. Well, I worked in the sports betting affiliate field and there was so much coverage of businesses like DraftKings and the legalization of sports betting in states like New York and Arizona and Pennsylvania that Google found that topic newsworthy. So today, a few days as I recorded this before the Super Bowl, if you were to go on Google and search for DraftKings Sportsbook, I promise you there is news above the organic search results because the Super Bowl is coming up and a lot of people are betting on it and they're looking for sites like DraftKings and FanDuel. Well, guess what we did as affiliates? We started to create sites and work with sites that were able to get into Google News and write a ton of articles about these brands at the right time. So if you search DraftKings right now before the Super Bowl, you're gonna see dozens if not hundreds of articles and almost that are in news that are above the normal search results. And almost all of those are really just affiliate articles trying to get you to sign up for DraftKings or one of its competitors. And that site gets a kickback if you click the link and sign up. So this has gone on in search for a long time. Affiliates in particular know how to use Google to their advantage. And in the case of AI, this has little to do with Google News, but it's something that is showing above the normal search results. And anytime there is something that shows above the results, whether it's Google News, paid ads, or now AI content, you bet that publishers want to get there. But in this case, Google's going to steal publishers' content and put it there. And that's where I worry, like, do you have the brands trying to manipulate AI? Anyway. That was like a addendum to this. Thanks for the fireside chat. If you like this video, found it interesting, anything about AI interesting here, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you head to our website, smokingrobot.ai. Subscribe to our three times a week AI newsletter. It's fun, it's informative, it's written for normal people, and it's a little bit irreverent. I promise you'll like it. Anyway, thanks for watching.